With such an incredible building created and built in the 90s, it had to have a design that not only would complement it, but would be a surprise. It had to be a stage for our partners to perform what they so do passionately every day, is make the perfect drink and food for you to enjoy. It's this beautiful, iconic white building at the corner of Michigan and Erie. It's filled with windows and filled with light and has been a really fantastic uh, place to put our Chicago roastery. It's incredible. Right when you come to the front door, me and my team will be there to greet you and, and bring you right into our process. They can look at the roasting progression in the glass jars and they can move right over into the roaster and see the whole process right in front of their eyes. Some of the big moves were to bring people upwards. You know, we want people to be curious, and so we had this vision of bringing the cask, um, which usually sits in the middle of the roasting area, and bringing it to sort of the storefront. And we thought it would be a really fantastic idea to bring in the Midwest's first curved escalator. And so you ascend, and you come up the escalator, and you come up around the cask, and it is actually the, the time where you get the closest to the cask and you get this really great experience of kind of winding around and arriving to the second floor. And so the cask sort of became the centering element and so from there we concepted the idea of the ceiling. If the cask is the sun, you know, the, the ceiling's the sun rays. The ceiling is made of five green rings and these colors are inspired by a connection to the agricultural plant of coffee. The ceiling goes from light to dark, from the cask to the very back, and it has this optical illusion that it's almost slanting upward. These projects give us the unique opportunity to take things like roasting, process equipment, and put them on display. We're moving food from level two to level one with a conveyor used in like processing plants. We had cladding over this object and we stripped it off so you could see the inner workings. It's like a Swiss watch, but it's built in Pennsylvania. Because of the verticality, um, we are utilizing a lot of different conveyance systems to move coffee around. The, the coffee gets loaded in the chain bay, comes up and gets dropped into another system that kind of moves overhead and then comes back around to the green bean silos. The pneumatic systems, they are just sculptural in nature. We call them symphony piping. And you can hear the coffee kind of rushing overhead and then kind of satisfyingly seeing it collected in the coffee silos that are located behind each bar. Each bar, they have to be beautiful, but also they have to be functional and support the programs. So what is the program? What is the equipment related to that program? And how the bar needs to be uh, accommodate that? If you think about the traffic that we're anticipating and the customers that are coming into the store, it won't work if the operators aren't able to um, serve those customers. And we have hundreds of vendors that we work with to pull equipment from all over the world to be able to customize the experience for our customers. To me, I always take away, it's the people. I look at a, you know, waterproofing detail and I'll remember you know, a specific craftsman and the care that he had to make sure that he knew there would not be a leak. It's that commitment that we've found in with these Chicago tradesmen, the electricians, the mechanical, all the specialty finishes. It was refreshing. Yeah, I think it's, you can simply credit what we got there to a Midwest work ethic. I mean, they were eager and they were proud and they were fully engaged in all the work. It, hands down, the strongest labor workforce I've worked around in my career. Overall, we wanted to tell the story of Starbucks as um, a stakeholder in the agricultural world. 
The muralist is incredible. You know, customers are going to be able to really appreciate it from far away, but once they get up close and are kind of circulating through that stair, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Even for us, no matter how in-depth you are with the planning, to actually be in the space is still another level of surprise. When we're talking about community, we're going to the fourth floor. We're learning about how Chicago's been in our history. It's you know, the first place outside of the Pacific Northwest that we expanded into. Everything today is about technology and you know, to make human connection cool again is also what this is about, right? Because you come in the door because it's a beautiful space. Um, but at the end of the day, the coffee is, I'll call it an excuse, but it's a way to get people to come and spend time together, right? Like just one human being with another one. And that's, to me, what's cool. It takes a small but powerful team to be able to create a project like this and be capitalize on the diverse set of talents that we have. It's incredibly satisfying to be here um, with our sixth global roastery. We've been able to you know, not only create a very beautiful project, but also be able to set the um, operations teams up for success for the business we know we want to do here.